I almost want to say that's the story of my life. <laughs> and I think it's the story of most successful people. Hey everyone, and welcome to RCA's new business culture podcast series. My name is Rob Arnold, founder of RCA. This podcast is all about learning from those in business who have shaped world-class business cultures, how they did it, and what they faced along the way in building these great cultures. We look forward to sharing their insights, tips, and tricks with you. In this episode, I travelled to the beautiful Valdevi estate to chat with Rake Nietlin, Olympic gold medalist and now marketing director for the Valdevi and Pearl Valley estate. We discussed Rake's successful transition from professional sport to the business world, what he took from one into the other and how he is now shaping a world-class culture at Valdevi. As someone who has... Um made that transition from the, the sporting professional sporting world into the business world. Tell us a bit about that journey and how you transitioned from the one to the other and, and what, what that sort of entailed. Well, thanks, Rob. I think um, it's important maybe to, ta- you know, to take a, you know, quite a few steps back. Um, it was you know, always uh, uh, in our house. It was not even a question that... Uh, didn't matter how good I was at sports, uh, be it rugby or swimming, that I had to go to university. So um, when I was uh, in my early teens, um, I started thinking about going to America to uh, to go there on a um, you know on a swimming scholarship and to go study, um, which I eventually did. Uh, in 1996, I went to the University of Arizona. Um, I think the great thing about the whole NCAA um, you know, system is, is that uh, they put education first. So you have to have at least a B average in order to get your scholarship money and in order to compete for the university. So, so, so it's not just you know, all about sports. Um, so, um, so I got my degree there. And uh, I think it was in my junior year, which is the third year, um, you know, if your studies, you can compete for the university for four years. So in my in my third year, um, so I was maybe like 21 years old, and then um, I thought, okay, uh, I'm doing quite well in swimming, but um, I don't want to, you know, once I finish my career, just have a bunch of medals on my you know on my CV. So um, I had some leadership. Uh, got some of the awards up there I had some leadership um, you know, accolades and some academic awards but um, I wanted a little bit more than just to say that I won a couple of medals and you know, you know I broke some records so um, I knew I had to get some work experience which was uh, a critical experience for me so after I got my degree in, in um, 2001 um, I went to go work for uh, quite a new um, a commercial real estate development and sales and leasing company in Tucson, Arizona. And I really started at the, right at the bottom. I was doing cold calling once a week, just you know, picking up the yellow pages back then um, and calling you know, different factories. I was, uh, I was focusing on industrial um, you know, tenants, so factories. Uh, and then once a week, I would go to business parks in the Arizona summer, which is between 40 and 45 degrees, you know, knocking on factory doors, asking people if they need more space, less space, if the lease is running out, if I can assist them in any way. So not very glamorous, uh, but I really enjoyed it and, and uh, learned a lot of you know, very valuable lessons there and had some had some really great mentors that also assisted me um, you know this young guy from South Africa that spoke with a very you know funny accent for the Americans <laughs> and um, yeah so that's you know so that's where I started then then I did that for uh, for about three years obviously worked my way up a little bit and then uh, decided I was gonna uh, uh, you know chase my dream in the pool again um, won the gold medal at, um, at the 2004 Olympics and then yeah, my life changed overnight uh, once we had the gold medal and you know, I had sponsors and stuff. But I had that experience 
of the business world and where I was kind of thrown into the deep end. So I had some skills. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, so, and I had a passion for real estate. Um, so then I, I, was only a, um, I was only a professional swimmer for, you know, for four years of my life. And that was from 2004 to 2008. And I, met, and I think I managed my career, although I had an agent, I managed my career with that business experience that I had and how I saw, saw my, um, you know, my bosses at, um, at the real estate company, how they managed you know, the business. I managed my career like that. And I had a, quite a you know, clear plan, although you know, no swimmer had ever become really a brand in South Africa. I, I, I kind of backed myself and I thought I could do it. And I think I was quite successful at it. Um, yeah, so that's really how I got into business. Um, I joined Voldevi, uh, actually just by chance. I was invited down um, late 2008 to do an article for, you know, for our magazine, for the Voldevi magazine. <coughs> Flew down, had no idea even where it was or, you know, like it was quite new. Um, and uh, when I drove through the gates, I just completely fell in love with the place. I mean, uh, there were only about 20 homes here at the time. It was dusty, uh, but I, I really loved it. And um, opened a swim school here on the estate. There was my second swim school that I opened um, and um, you know, started spending more and more time here. Also really connected with the founder of Aldevi, Martin Fenter. He, he, uh, he had a background in commercial real estate. He was one of the first uh, you know, directors of Atterbury, which built the Mall of Africa, one of the biggest developers in the country. So we had that connection. And uh, I was never paid to be an ambassador for Valdiv, but I was this, you know, like unofficial, official ambassador, you know, telling everybody about it. Just really passionate about the area and about the development. And then in 2010, I, I pretty much told Martin I was going to join the, <laughs> you know, the, you know, the the company full time. And uh, he said, sure, we'll, you know, we'll figure out, you know how to do it and um, so it was a it was quite a natural you know progression from from just you know coming down for an article to you know, you know to joining the business and I must say along with deciding to go to the University of Arizona joining Valdivie and coming down here was definitely one of the best decisions of my life. That's a very interesting story up until until this point and um, one thing we always ask our our guests um, is this notion that I think we learn the most through the most difficult aspects of our journey. And, and I guess, you know, a lot of us call those failures, but good failures. For you, if you can think back up until this point, is, are there any instances or occurrences that, that resonate with you, that stick in your memory, that you can remember that day or, or that experience for a, a hugely learning-driven uh, experience? Rob, I mean... Uh, I almost want to say that's the story of my life <laughs> and I think it's the story of most successful people uh, you know definitely sports people um, when I do talks to corporates and to schools uh, I spend way more time talking about the failures um, in inverted commas there because uh, um, people only see the successes usually um, but there no I mean there were a lot of failures um, on a sporting um, yeah, you know, on a sporting sense, um, the 2000 Olympics for me was was one of the biggest disappointments of my life. I went there uh, expecting hopefully three medals. Um, I um, the best I did was you know fifth place, although I broke a they say an African record in the final. I, th I thought I was a failure. That's when I quit swimming and I started working. So that was quite a big. Uh, you know, moment in my life, but I I learned some you know some very, very you know big lessons you know in that process that you can't control what other people do. Mm. I was still the, the fastest South African and the fastest African ever, and you have to celebrate those those personal wins. You know, um, to win is not always uh, maybe to finish first, but to do the best that you can possibly do. It's may, maybe not such a popular opinion, but uh, you know one that um, my coach always said to win is to be the best in the history of your body and uh, and I really believe that and um, then another one that 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 also turned out 
you know, in sports that really turned out well is that <clears throat> in 2003, um, our relay team, we got last place at the World Championships. Uh, we were four and a half seconds behind the winners. We swam in lane one. I was the last guy that swam and, uh, you know, I think about 20 meters behind the winners, uh, which, which is, which is in, in swimming, I mean, it's half the pool. And um, we got out there and, and, and we made a pact and uh, we promised we're never going to feel like this again and we're going to remember this feeling and this is going to motivate us. And 12 months later, the same four guys with the same coaches uh, broke the world record and won the gold medal at Olympic Games. Um, just because we changed our attitude, yeah. we decided we're not going to make any more excuses. We accepted uh, the hand that was dealt to us. That we're not going to get the support from from you know swimming south africa um we're not going to have the sponsors we're going to fly in the back of the plane we're going to fly halfway around the world to get to a place that should take half the time um we're going to have to borrow you know swimsuits and, and equipment from other countries but um that makes us tough and um yeah so that failure turned into one of the biggest blessings and it changed my life. So, um, so I definitely believe in that, that you learn through those, you know, those tough, those tough times. It's, uh, it seems like the, the change in perspective is a key shift, I think, and often it takes that shock therapy almost to, for that to happen. We find that a lot of uh, people that end up being successful in, in whatever element of business or in, in the sporting world is that shift from being uh, a victim to to take control of your own yeah. destiny do you think that's kind of what happened in, in your guys case that you you took control of that and and how do you feel that how, how relevant do you feel that is in the in the business world as well yeah i, I think a th like a definite you know theme for us was um stop being victims and be victors um, so, so just make the best of the situation. Um, yes, we are from South Africa and, and, um, we don't have the facilities and the money and this, but like I said, it really makes us tough. And when we stood on the blocks, we just knew that whoever was next to us, be it Sweden, Italy, France, the U S they had no idea. They didn't have to walk the, you know, the walk that we had to, in order to get there. So we just kind of thought that we we have this extra little bit on them and um, and that really played in our favor so um, I think that's a you know it's a key thing is just to you know like to make the most of your you know of your situation and not to make excuses for it mm, absolutely you had the, the interesting um, dynamic of both being an individual athlete but then also as you've alluded to being in a team environment Obviously, uh, working with different personalities, both in the professional sporting area, but then also here in the business world, um, you know, it's uh, it's obviously a key key element. W what for you, uh, in terms of, of culture, do you try and instill in in your your team here that perhaps you learned from from those team days? It's amazing how similar the swimming, uh, my swimming experience is to business, as you. As you pointed out, you know, swimming is, well, for me, it was quite unique because it's a very individual sport and that's how the majority of the public sees it. But we won the gold medal as a relay. So the other thing that we really changed was, I think before we were you know, swimming as four individuals, uh, myself and Roland, and even to a certain extent, uh, a guy like Lyndon, we were individually, we were very big rivals because at the Olympics you also swim the 100 meter freestyle and you're trying to win a medal so my, my competition is Roland and you know in Linden um, but then uh, another day we're on the same team so um, after that disappointment and failure at the world championships we decided we we're just going to invest in each other even though it meant that Ultimately, individually, I was creating, you know, a monster <laughs> that I had to go beat. But as a team, we could do something that is really amazing. And we really started to invest in each other. Um, I would encourage, you know, Roland during sessions, if he was feeling down, he would do the same for me. 
and we started to build each other up and um, that's also uh, that's also you know something that I learned in America and I think that's one of the reasons why the Americans are in most fields why they are the leaders is because they they have this this bigger vision that whatever it is in the world they have to be the best and they will on a local level they will encourage each other they will they will collaborate in order to be the best in the world and after you know spending so much time they we learned this and um and in business it's the same thing i mean here at volde v you know we've got our agents so on the on the property sales side and they're competing for you know for clients but they sometimes overstep that and they will almost you know sabotage or try to sabotage the uh, you know the other agents in order to get the client. and and I'm trying to install that that idea that uh, instead of fighting over the little slice let's m- make the whole pie bigger let's all work together and and um, um, actually let's not just think about what happens in Valdivie but let's you know rather think what happens in the you know in the Cape Islands and in the whole Western Cape if we make this a great place then sure we might lose one or two sales but in the long run we're going to get much more so uh, it's difficult to instill that because uh, it takes time i mean it took us it took us a long time as well and we had to really bump our heads a lot of times uh, and really i mean when i say the 2000 was a you know, 2001 was a big disappointment 2002 was a disappointment 2003 and eventually we you know, we got there but once we broke through that and we we figured it out it was like we had the the golden key you know <laughs> and we knew how to do it and it was like the floodgates opened i mean we started breaking world records individually and um yeah it was like we had the secret you know so it's um so that's what i try to do here is to is to try to teach people the secrets of working together even though in their minds they might give up one or two sales but uh, to teach them that that they'll get back in in um, mm. yeah much more it's it's fascinating how you talk about that um, that notion of serving uh, each other before you serve the greater customer and it, it's also you know it's become a, a trait that we've noticed in a lot of the companies and environments that do deliver uh, service excellence mm. ultimately that they realize how important it is to first serve the internal community or our, our own yeah. team members and get them into the right state before you know you you you, you serve your customers yeah. and it, it seems to be a proven a proven approach yeah. i also just want to say just one thing about the other thing that we that we learned from that failure was um and i mean this might seem you know like elementary but is to you know we were always focused on the outcome so we would go, we would start a season and say, we want to win a medal at World Championships. Okay, now it's you know, 12 months away. We, you know, so we start training and yeah, we want to win a medal. Um, and we would always come short, miss the target by a few degrees, or not just a few, by a lot, because we, we missed a few degrees at the start. So... After 2003, the failure, we said, okay, we're not going to talk about the medal. We're not going to talk about the outcome. We're going to focus every day on the process. Mm. Just focusing on not being 101% or 110%, just being 100%. Mm. You do not have to overextend yourself every day. Just do what you can do. Just be the best that you can be every single day. And that's what we did for... For 365 days, you know, or, um, and so we just we really focused on on the process. Even in the morning of the f- uh, of the relay in Athens, we almost broke the world record. All we said was, "Guys, we're going to go out there this morning and we're going to make the final because that's the process. You have to make the final in order to swim, you know, for a minute." And we almost broke the world record in the morning, and the people got very excited like wow these guys are gonna win and we said no all we've done is we've just made the final now we just we still have to you know stick to the process it was we could have easily have gone oh no we you know we're there now we just have to show up 
but we stuck to the process and I think that is also something that is very important is to is to not get ahead of yourself and and chase the targets but what do you have to do every single day and do it well and and um, uh, in order to get there one day and if you add it all up yeah eventually you'll get there I think there's so much validity to that uh, those incremental wins that you you have um, when you look at Everest in its totality it seems no, it's a huge impossible. challenge impossible you, like you're not even going to try it. yeah but you just have to take that one step at a time and um, if you yeah. if you break it up you'll get there yeah that's I think hugely valuable insights um, and yeah. talking and, and furthering on that trend when you look to bring uh, someone in to, to make the team better or to make the the culture better here what sort of uh, traits or um, behavior types are you looking for in people that that fit into the culture that you've built here at Valdivie? Um Yeah, I, I think it, it definitely takes a certain type or, you know, we look for, for uh, you know, for certain you know, types of people. I think they must be, must be team players. Mm-hmm. Um, we like humble, you know, humble people that, um, um, you know, that are you know like willing to you know to put the work in. Um, I think we are not we're not micromanagers. Uh, we we get people with you know certain skills and we encourage them to uh, to go out there and and to and to innovate mm. um, and to go do their thing. We don't you know we don't criticize you know too much. Sure. We accept that people are going to make uh, you know mistakes. Um, obviously, we need to learn from those mistakes, but we don't, we don't, um, you know, like criticize them too much uh, because those uh, we we see ourselves as a, not necessarily. I mean, it's difficult in property to be to to be cutting edge, but we mm. we we strive continuously to improve, yeah. and in that you're going to make you know some mistakes sometimes. Mm. But if you don't make mistakes, you also maybe not trying hard enough you know sure. and just kind of staying in the bunch so uh, yeah so I think that's you know that's what uh, we again we we try to stay humble even though we've been successful mm-hmm. um, team and and you know people that that um, that are willing to put themselves out there and and, sure. and to con- and to continuously improve yeah speaking to that track of, of failure earlier I think you've the, the saying these days you've got to fail fast and and and, and improve and fail forward and fail forward um, which is I guess part of the, tri- the process of getting to where you want to be at the end of the end of the road looking ahead in terms of of the notion of being the most productive version of oneself uh, which is seems to be a, a big trend these days uh, you were you obviously used your time very effectively in your career so far um, and I'm, I'm sure trying to instill that on the people that, that you mentor and lead in, in your environment here now. The notion of, product, of productivity, what do you think are, are key elements to get that to where it best can be or reaching our individual potential? Rob, I feel, I feel there, I'm always learning, you know, and, and, and you know, I think that's something that maybe it's also a hallmark is that you, that you, you never think that you've you know, like really achieved anything. <laughs> I mean, every morning I wake up, and this is how I, this is how I feel about life: is that I have to go out there and go prove myself. Yeah. So productivity for me, I feel like it's something that I can always improve on. Mm-hmm. Um, I I get into uh, times in my life where I feel like I'm 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 not being you know that productive. I'm getting stuck on things that that are, are not necessarily, you know, moving me forward. So, um, <clears throat> and I think there's a lot of external, uh, you know, things that that, um, that we do and that are in our lives, you know, cell phones is probably the, the thing that, that we think makes us productive, yeah. but in essence, you know, if we really look at it, maybe it doesn't, you know. So um, I think that's, you know, that's something that I continuously see you know how I can improve and and um, and also yeah I, I think you know sometimes to take a step back and just to observe and and uh, to slow down a little bit um, you know we always uh, I feel like that's something that I've really 
noticed for me personally over the last 18 months is I really need to slow down mm -hmm. and remove myself and then I take not just one or two steps forward I can take quantum leaps sometimes mm -hmm. and just things become clearer um, that's something that works for my personality I am quite an introvert and uh, at work sometimes you just you're delegating and you're giving a lot uh, so for me you know slowing down in order to move forward is important so looking at the the leaders you spoke about a little bit earlier from the US which was your initial uh, soiree into being managed by someone or led by someone and now yourself being a leader and manager of different people uh, you said right now that you, you take a step back and you look back into uh, what you're doing and how you're doing it how would you describe your style of, of management or leadership as a result of those experiences you had growing up, look, I had a I had a coach that, uh, yeah, Frank Bush. He 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 ended up being the head coach of you know, of USA Swimming, which in, in in swimming is the most powerful job in mm. you know, in the world. Sure. And um, I'd like to think that I have a little bit of of him in me, and mm. and and I think I'm I'm. Um, um, I'm, I'm strict, mm. uh, but um, and I try to, to to get the best out of everybody. It's mm. not a one size fits all. I treat I try to treat in, different individuals on the merits, mm. um, and um, I try to encourage people to to you know to lead in their own little sphere. Sure. Um, like I said, I don't definitely don't micromanage mm. as, you know, as long as they get the work done. Mm -hmm. um, I like to motivate. Um, I organize, you know, like motivational speakers all the time. Yeah. Um, try to get new ideas, you know, stimulate them, you know, get them out. Um, go climb, you know, you know, mountains and awesome. uh, you know, get into the gym, be active. So um, yeah, and I think to to make it enjoyable. Um, it, the end of the day it's got to be fun and not to be to get too personal um, um, you know if it doesn't you know work out then mm. then then people can move on and you know go find something that really gets them you know, gets them going yeah I think what you just said there is so so critical in terms of from the culture point of view is defining as clearly as one can what you are and what you're not um, and people I think once they once that is clear they can either it either resonates with them, or uh, or it doesn't. Um, you know, yeah. if it's clear, they can see yeah. what it is and what it isn't. So, getting to the, to the uh, to the work life balance side of things, um, you know, in, in terms of 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 Rakenetling, what do you like to do when the focus is not one hundred percent on? Uh, setting properties, making Voldivy the most amazing place it, it is. Um, what do you What do you do just to balance things out of it? Exercise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think for me to move is so. I think it's just so ingrained in me since mm. I've been, you know, six, six, seven years old. Mm. I started, you know, swimming and at least an hour a day from you know from those days. So if I don't move at least for half an hour and get my heart rate over 100 110 then uh, you can ask my team as well then I'm not I'm quite gr <laughs> I'm a little bit grumpy then uh, so to exercise for me is is really really important um, I enjoy reading um, you know traveling for me and I think what we do is extremely important just to mm. To, you know to get inspiration and uh, but just to go back to the leadership I think the you know one of the key things for me is this um, is to lead by example and I think mm. to be to be really authentic I think people can see through through um, people uh, I mean, people aren't you know they're not stupid um, yeah. and to really lead by example to you know and for me that's from a practical you know point of view I pick up the trash Mm. Um, you, you know, I if you know if there's heavy lifting to, that needs to be done, you know, I'm there. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, you know, above anything. Mm. And I think that's the kind of culture that we you know that we set here is that we we're not afraid to get our hands dirty. 
be it you know to pick up uh, you know cigarette butts or to get into the vineyards and mm. and or to clean or um, you know to get into the stables and you know and do your things. So. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, there, there's so many amazing things happening at Valdivy and, and so much value to um, to to the residents here, etc. If we look at it on a slightly higher level from a purpose point of view, um, what is what is the greater team here looking to achieve on that level, you know, day to day? What what's the purpose here at Valdivy? Yeah, I think the purpose is definitely to you know to leave a, like a lasting legacy. Mm. Yeah, that's the beauty of property is that you're yeah. building something that's going to be here for for centuries. Mm. Um, the impact that we've made here on the valley is is significant. Even uh, yeah, uh, we're always trying to be humble, but I think mm. you know we've created close to five thousand permanent jobs. There's about twelve thousand people that work on the estates uh, in on in any given week. Uh, the impact on the municipality um, in the valley, uh, yeah, it, you know, it's been significant. So, mm. so it's really nice, and, and and I think most people will agree when they come here. There's a there's a different feel to it. Um, it's because we do it for you know, for the love and passion and, mm. and we think that we can make a difference. Um, just as a side note, um, the Valdivy Foundation, we've raised uh, in three and a half years more than 20 million rand um, you know, for projects you know, in this valley mm. from you know, Wellington, Paul and Franchuk. And um, we paid most of that out before we repaid the loans on the development company. So, so that's really the purpose is mm. to you know, is to make a difference and and um, as a side, you know, th I think the clients and the buyers also s they also see it and mm. and it's you know it's nice to be part of something that is more than just making money. Yeah, I can't remember who it was who said it, but the the notion that those who serve the most actually are the most wealthy mm. is is something which we find so many of the guys leading in the industries are the guys that, that give back the most, yeah. the most, that contribute the most. Um, are making the biggest waves in terms of progress, etc. So a question we always ask our guests uh, in terms of uh, you know your individual preferences and things like that. If you had to uh, go to one restaurant for the rest of your life, uh, you've had the benefit of travel and, and some wonderful exposure. Is there any one restaurant where you'd be quite happy to to dine for the rest of your life? You know, I lived in lived in Tucson, Arizona, which is half an hour from the Mexican border mm -hmm. <clears throat> for uh, almost 12 years. And um, if you put me in any Mexican you know, restaurant for the rest of my life, I'll be happy. That's <laughs> the one thing I really, really miss yeah. about America is the Mexican food. So breakfast, I can eat any breakfast burrito for the rest of my life, lunch, tacos. So um, yeah, so interesting. Yeah. yeah. So in other words, South Africa get your act together when it comes to Mexican. Yeah, Mexican food. It's it's, it's just not quite the same, you know, the spices yeah. and stuff. So sure. so uh, yeah. whenever I go back to the States, um, I, I pick up a few kilos because there's, there's a lot of cheese and, uh, you know, fried food involved. But it's, um, I also think it brings, it brings back good memories from my university days. Mm. So if you could get your team here to think one thing consistently in other words day in and day out they never went a day without thinking about that one one aspect could you pinpoint one thing that you'd like them to to think about i think you know being in the luxury um, space because we do we are a luxury mm. um, you know estate um, the one thing is attention to detail um, i think that's what you know, it sets people apart, mm. um, people that enjoy the luxury products uh, or the finer things in life. That's what they pay attention to. Mm. It's something that I keep on drilling in and um, that's something that we really try to focus. It becomes very difficult when you've got, at the moment, we've got 1,500 families living here. Sure. Uh, it's a thousand hectares. There's a lot of blades of grass <laughs> that can be out of place and trees that need pruning and irrigation heads mm. that are broken but um, it, uh, you know, it's something that we really try to focus on and, and uh, it's, um, uh, yeah, it's um, a culture and a way of life. Mm. 
yeah, I certainly think you guys, you live that in, in, in the way that things happen here. And just driving through the estate today, you can see that that's, that certainly is being, uh, being lived. In terms of uh, the next big audacious goal for, for Rack Nettling, what, uh, what does that look like? Um, yeah, you know, I think um, in the past, you know, I've heard people say that we were lucky when we won the gold medal because the Americans had a bad race and maybe we were a little bit, but we definitely had the skills and, would, and we learned our lessons and we were we were prepared to take that opportunity. Mm. And I feel like, in, you know, right now we're, where we are with Valdiv, we've we've learned the lessons, we've got the skills, we've got the team, we are prepared, and there are some very interesting opportunities on the horizon. I can't say too much about it, but um, you know, um, uh, you know, international expansion is something that we've looked at for the last two three years. Um, you know, Valdiv is essentially over the hump you know we're probably about 90 percent sold out um and i think we've got a team and a culture that's established here uh so yeah so we're looking at something um a few opportunities you know internationally i think what we have here and 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 our recipe is something that will really resonate uh, you know, internationally so mm. it's something that uh, it's on my desk here it's all I spend a lot of time on it and yeah. uh, hopefully it will be successful as you know as Valdiv South Africa. Well for the uh, 10% that's left over in terms of uh, still that opportunity to be part of uh, Valdiv how can uh, how can interested uh, parties get uh, get in touch what's the easiest way for for them short of actually coming to this beautiful estates to Yeah to I was going to say the best way is you know just to come visit us because yeah. um, uh, the pictures don't do it justice or the, the Although it looks good, mm -hmm. um, yeah, 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 obviously they can go to our website, mm -hmm. it's valdeby.co.za. Um, go check us out on all the social media, you know, pages, Instagram, Twitter, um, you know, Facebook, YouTube, everywhere. But uh, we host a lot of events. Um, we, we've recently, you know, we've you know, transitioned more to wellness. Mm -hmm. um, and we found that everything that we did anyway, you know, all the equestrian activities, you know, the golf, you know, the mountain biking, mm. the fitness, it all fits into wellness. Um, we've got a very exciting new farm to table concept mm. that we will that will start on our farms that we have on the estate. Our residents will be able to buy the produce that we produce here on our own farms, um, buy at a, you know, sort of a, like a local market mm -hmm. and we'll also supply to the three restaurants that we have on the estate so Fantastic. really focusing on wellness and uh, mm -hmm. yeah for people that want to come visit us we open you know seven days a week we've got you know beautiful restaurants mm -hmm. lots of events uh, we host the app the apps cape epic grand finale it's a great time to come check us out mm -hmm. fantastic well rick thanks so much for your time this morning um and just to briefly acknowledge you, I think what you've achieved, obviously in the pool, but now in the business space, is 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 really f incredible. And I, I wish you guys any success as the journey of Valdiv continues. Um, and thank you for for being a supporter of our business, and, and we really appreciate the uh, the support there. But um, all the best for the, for no, the time to come. Thanks, mate. That's it for today, guys. If this episode brought you value, please do subscribe to the podcast series. And for more information on building your organizational culture, visit us at rcaconsulting.biz. We'll see you in the next episode.